Thank you, Nora. Thank you, everyone, for having me here. It's a great honor. Um, so just like Nora said, I've been fortunate enough to work with impact entrepreneurs for the past three years, mainly coming from Africa. And I've tried to connect the tech ecosystem from Europe and Africa in order to exchange best practices and have the best impact we can. So among all the entrepreneurs I've met throughout the programs I've led, um, the most striking things I can notice when I start talking with them is the circumstances that led them to create their business. We've said it already, it's not the fame, it's not the money that led them to create their business. It's most of the time an injustice that they want to fix. It's a failing public system or it's just a missing solution in their daily life. So one characteristic of those entrepreneurs would be their motivation and their drive to create their business. I want to mention two entrepreneurs that I met in the past year that really embody the impact entrepreneurship according to me. The first one comes from Tunisia. Her name is Hend Hawini. She's a chemi chemical doctor and uh, she created this crazy process that takes red seaweed and turns it into bio sorry, biodegradable and organic plastic. So her innovation doesn't only gonna fight climate crisis and the, cr and the plastic crisis that we're all aware of. Um, her innovation is integrated in her local community. Hen comes from Tunis, where the fishermen community suffered from the high rate of pollution and contamination of their waters, leading them to lose their job and all of their economic opportunities. With her innovation, Hen wants to uh, suggest and invite the spouses of those fishermen to grow the Red Sea weed with her in order for them to regain their power and the economic empowerment. So we're not talking only about a crazy disturbative, disturbative innovation like creating an organic biodegradable plastic. We're also talking about economic impact and social impact in the community. Another entrepreneur that I would like to mention, her name is Naja Chirigan. She's from Algeria and her as well wants to impact the local communities and more specifically the farmers who don't have any solution to store the crops that they grow and suffer from the loss of them because they go bad because of time, because they live in remote areas where they don't have access to the markets where they can sell their crops. Najat came up with this great innovation that by putting solar panels on little units, she's creating a refrigerating system, cooling system from solar energy. And this is a huge innovation. But again, we're not just talking about an energetic solution. We're talking about economic empowerment for those farmers that are going to be able to go sell their crops, that are going to be able to travel miles and miles around the desert. But this innovation can also be used in other sectors. We're talking about health. Why not use this system to move medication across countries? So with those two entrepreneurs, you can see that the impact is huge. It's not about energy, it's about economy, it's about social empowerment. And from all those conversations with those entrepreneurs that I met, I think there are three things they really need for their innovation to blossom and have the major impact that they aim at having. The first thing would be to have a strong ecosystem. Those entrepreneurs, they have the passion but they need the structure, they need the people, they need the place that's gonna help them grow their business. They need mentors that are gonna help them with the technical skills that they often miss. They need places to have internet access and they need places to meet with their peers so that they can exchange their doubt, talk about their challenges and create a network of impact entrepreneurs. A second thing they would need is a legal framework that is gonna help them grow their business. 
I'm thinking about the Startup Act of Tunisia that has had a major impact on the tech ecosystem and that have paved the way to Startup Act in Senegal, in Benin, in Ivory Coast. And with those Startup Acts, we're talking about social protection to the entrepreneurs, we're talking about tax incentives, we're talking about the easiness to create a business. And finally, I want to mention impact investment that has come with impact entrepreneurship. Marcus has already talked about it earlier. And, but this, it's really important for impact entrepreneurs to find the funds to help the business grow. Today, in, um, impact investors are too scarce on the continent, and yet the richness and the potential of the solution is amazing. So I hope more impact investors join the fight and have a major impact on both of our continents. Thank you. Thank you, Philippine.